What's up everyone, I'm Tony Donst and welcome to my very first video blog. I'll be using this blog as an opportunity to discuss what's going on in my life and career, what's happening in the news, especially in relation to gambling, and we'll take a look at how my results have been with gambling, in particular relating to poker, but also sports betting and daily fantasy sports. Some of you might know me from the World Poker Tour where I am a host and commentator, Others of you may be watching me for the first time and are like, who the f is this guy? So my job working for the World Poker Tour does consume some of my time, but with the rest of my time, I am a professional gambler here in Las Vegas and I'm still playing a lot of poker to supplement my income. Now I am a mid-stakes cash game player and by mid-stakes I normally mean like 5, 10, and 10, 20, no limit, which used to be a game you could get tons of variety here in Las Vegas, even as recently as a few years ago. Now, there's only a few poker rooms you can go to to get those games with any regularity, and during the weekdays, game selection can be pretty sparse. So, if you're gonna live in Las Vegas and make your living playing cash, you need to get out there and grind hard during the World Series in the summer when there are games going all over the place every single day and you gotta be grinding on weekends. One tricky part about living in Las Vegas is by far the best days to socialize are the weekends and by far the best days to play poker for a living are the weekends. So you kinda have to make your pick if this is where you wanna live and that's how you wanna make your living. Now, before we get into what's coming up in 2019, let's take a look at what my results were like in 2018. I started keeping really careful track of my results starting May 5th in 2018. I did play a handful of cash sessions before that. I have no idea what my results were like. There was probably a few small wins, a few small losses. I have no idea whether I came out ahead, but I can say after May 5th, I recorded every single session that I played how long I played, where I played, what the stakes were, and what my results were. So let's go ahead and take a look at what my results were like in 2018 playing live cash. So during 2018, I played 375 and a half hours of live cash from May 5th until December 31st in what was 85 different sessions. So my sessions averaged about four and a half hours and predominantly were made up of 510, 510, 20, and 10, no limit usually at Aria, but I do play a little bit at Bellagio and win here in Las Vegas. And there was some sessions on the road for the World Poker Tour, such as at the Borgata or in the Los Angeles area, where it's actually not that hard to get a game. Los Angeles is a great place to play cash for a living. So what were my results like over those 375 and a half hours? Well, my profit over those hours was $81,154, which works out to an hourly of $217. And that's helpful and interesting, and I'm very pleased with those results, but I think it's more useful to examine just what my results in hourly are at the mid stakes. So there was about 10 sessions of PLO in there and I am not a good PLO player. I'm essentially using this time here in Las Vegas to learn PLO. I have no business pretending to be a profitable player in those games. And I've had some larger sessions. I was playing some 10, 20, 40, some 20, 40, 25, 50. One super crazy 25, 50, 100 session at Aria with a Croatian probably gangster guy. And that's a long story for another vlog. But for today, let's take a look at what my 510, 510, 20, and 10, 20 no limit sessions were during 2018. Those are really the stakes that people would call mid stakes. And those are the ones that since they make up such a high percentage of my sessions, I really wanna know what my results are like. At those stakes, I played 314 and a quarter hours over 2018, or at least that period of 2018. I profited $76,067, bringing me to an hourly of $242, which I'm really happy about. Um, that's actually above the, the almost mythical 10 big blinds per an hour that everyone is attempting to make at live cash. And I think that I probably ran above expectation during those hours. I don't think that making $240 an hour, even with really good game selection at 510 and 1020, when you're getting like psh, 25, 30 hands an hour, is that realistic? Um, I do practice very good game selection. If the game is good, I play late. If the game is bad, I will leave. Even if I'm stuck, I don't care about any of that shit. It's all just one long session, but I don't think it's realistic to expect to make over 10 big blinds per an hour in live cash games, unless maybe you have the best 
cash games and constant access going to them year round, which I absolutely do not here in Las Vegas. As for my tournament results in 2018, I can give you some numbers. I know that I had eight caches in tournaments, that my best cash was for a little over $20,000 for getting 13th place in a 3K six max event during the summer at the World Series. I don't know exactly how much my buy-ins were. I had the math for the World Series, which worked out to about up $800 over 21 tournaments. So nothing too interesting there. I was definitely down on tournaments for the year, but not significantly so. Um, if you know me from the poker world, you probably know me as a tournament poker player. I was a high volume online tournament grinder for a long time. For the last several years, I've been traveling around the world playing live tournaments, mostly for the World Poker Tour or during my time sponsored as a player ambassador for Party Poker. Uh, and I had an awesome time traveling around and gambling in all of those events, but also playing tournaments for a living is a very challenging way to earn an income because you can go on losing streaks that last months or potentially years. And if you're not one of the very, very top players, I'm not that confident that you can make all that much money after you factor in taxes, potentially selling to backers, expenses such as flights and hotels. I love poker tournaments. I'm gonna play a ton more tournaments in my career. They're just not the same focus the way they were before. Um, and I will probably be playing tournaments for the most part in the domestic of the United States instead of trying to travel to faraway places to get into a lot of tournaments. I've been fortunate to get to travel to a lot of those prestigious events. So for me, 2019 will definitely have some tournaments, but it's not gonna be my primary focus the way it was in past years. Next, let's talk about the news and what's going on in the gambling world and industry. Now, 2018 was a big year for the gambling industry because the United States Supreme Court struck down PAPSA, which is an acronym for the Professional and Amateur Sports Protection Act. What PAPSA really meant was that each state was not allowed to legalize sports betting. Uh, Nevada essentially had a monopoly within the United States on the ability to legalize sports betting, but you could not place a wager from another state in Nevada. You couldn't, you know, be in West Virginia and call up a casino in Nevada and be like, yo, let me get $10,000 on the bears this week. Nah, not happening. If you wanted to make a bet in a Las Vegas casino, you had to be present in Las Vegas. There was no other legal way to do that across the United States. And now with PAPSA getting struck down, you are going to see tons and tons of states start to legalize online sports betting, and that is gonna have sort of a snowball effect for online poker, because those will often be tandem bills as sort of like online gambling. And the biggest state to legalize online gambling in 2018 was Pennsylvania. Now we thought we were gonna get Michigan leading up to the new year. Um, both the Congress and the Senate in Michigan agreeing on a bipartisan bill to legalize online gambling. Unfortunately, Michigan governor and bottled water enthusiast Rick Snyder vetoed that bill in his lame duck session as governor. He's about to step down, and unfortunately, he decided to veto the online gambling bill because he felt it might take away some of the business that was going to the lottery. He wanted to protect the state lottery. And it's really frustrating how whenever online gambling suffers a setback in the United States government, it's usually as a result of a business-friendly, small government politician who, in this case, wants to protect, hold on, just let me check my notes, a state-owned monopoly. So unfortunately, we will not be getting Michigan in the fold in 2019. It's uncertain as to how the incoming Democratic governor feels about online gambling, but we can hope and expect some other states to start to legalize or make progress on the legislative front, online gambling, online poker, online sports betting in 2019. Okay, as for what's going on with me, and my career? Well, obviously, when it comes to discussing my career in these vlogs, I do need to practice some discretion. I mean, I can't post a video on Saturday where I'm like, man, Vince, I'm sick of his shit, and then show up to the office on Monday and expect everything to be normal. But 
I have a lot of fun at work, and not everything in my career pertains to just the World Poker Tour. I am trying to expand my career right now. I really feel that with the change to the laws about sports betting in the United States, you're going to start to see broadcasters on panels in mainstream sports broadcasts discussing the line for the game that night, discussing who they think the best fantasy play is that night, discussing do they think the game is gonna hit the over or stay under? You already see a little of that, and you definitely see it in international sports coverage where sports betting has been legalized and normalized for years or decades, but in the United States, that's still fairly new, and I would love to be one of those guys telling America about sports betting and gambling, how it works, how to become better at it. And I think coming from a background where I've been really transparent about the highs and lows of my gambling swings in my career. So I feel like I would be a great fit to sell America on the idea that gambling is nowhere near as scary or shady as we've been told it is for so long now. And while I don't have anything coming up on the gambling front, that's really news in my career, there is the possibility that I go on The Bachelorette. Now, I'll admit, I did not think reality TV was A, where my career was gonna go, or B, something I would even be that interested in when I first started working in television. A lot of people said to me that, oh, well, make sure to never work in reality TV, otherwise you'll never work in another part of the industry. And that may be true, but the fact is, I am not someone who's really trying to build up like a, like a film career or a mainstream TV acting career. And I accept that a lot of reality television is produced sometimes to the point of being scripted. And I can't say exactly how much or what scenes in a show like The Bachelorette are scripted. What I do know is I really hope that if I get on the show, they don't want me to say stuff like this. I have to do all this alone afterwards now. I do it all alone. I to go through all this alone. <laughs> I knew it. Oh, that's so emo. Oh, God. But if I were to get on the show, I do feel like it would be a lot of fun. Despite some of the behind the scenes string pulling that goes on, I would do my best to come across well. You're not in complete control of how you're edited, but fingers crossed. And I think it would just be an interesting competition where as a professional poker player, you're taught to think strategically about things, even if it's not just strictly within the game. And I've been single and dating for oh, 15, 20 years now. So I definitely have some experience in that arena. I have no idea how I would fare in a contest format of dating, but I'm at least intrigued. So hopefully you guys catch me on that in 2019 as to where I am in the process. I sent in a written application and then I went into their offices and did a in-person casting slash interview where they took some pictures, asked me some pretty straightforward questions. I was in there for about 20 minutes total and that was essentially it. So I'm told that I will hear back whether I'm still in contention later on this month after they have selected a bachelorette for this season and have started to finesse what kind of men they are looking for for this season. So cross your fingers for me. Okay, everyone, that's it for today's video, but please follow along as I go to Gardens Casino this weekend. I'll be making a vlog of the event, how it goes for me, hopefully all the money that I win. We'll find out. Stay tuned for more and subscribe below.